There was a German Lutheran pastor and theologian, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was from Germany, and in Germany, he came to America to study, and as Hitler rose in power, he decided he went back to be with his people. And in going back, he preached the gospel without compromise and ended up being martyred by the Nazis for that proclamation of faith. One of the things he said is that there is no such thing as cheap grace. What did he mean by that, cheap grace? What he meant by that is that when God saves us, it's not just that God saves us and we're saved and we just go on keeping being the way we are, which would be cheap grace. We get it. We just have it. and We don't have to do anything in response to receiving it. But really, what a Christian is called to do is to put their life into that gift of God's salvation that they have received to live their life according to the will of God. And that's what James, in his first letter, which we'll be reading parts of over the next few weeks, tells us in today's reading. He tells us of God's great goodness to us, of what he has given us in Jesus Christ. And then he says, that word of the good news that we have received, we are meant to live out. We aren't meant just to hear it and say, oh good, I have the good news, I have the gospel, and I not live out what I have received, which is nothing less than God within us, Christ within us, and his life and goodness in us, but that we must be doers of the word as well. Doers of the word as well. What he was talking about to people who were saying, oh, I've been saved, I don't have to do anything, God saved me, God loves me, God forgives me, I can live like I want to live, that's one extreme of people who do not do what they have heard. The other extreme we might be able to see in today's gospel, where the Pharisees come to Jesus and say to him, your disciples don't follow these little pious practices, we could call them, that the Pharisees had. Pharisees came about from a sense of this group of Jewish people, came about centuries before from a sense that we are chosen by God and we are set apart. But their idea of being set apart wasn't set apart with a mission to do something as much as set apart from the world and the rest of the world, the unsaved world, the Gentile world, has about it something that is evil. And so they had the habits developed of washing everything, not for hygiene. Back then, people wouldn't know a germ from a nuclear reactor, but they did have that sense that what they had brought from the world needed to be cleansed of its unholiness. Well, what happened over time is their practices of washing all these things and many other practices they had came to outweigh what we hear in the gospel of seeking to live a life set free from that list of vices that we heard, those attitudes that can be in their hearts. And they were more concerned, did you wash your hands? Did you wash that kettle? Then they were concerned with following, being on a journey to come to measure up to Christ who lives in us. Now we never really measure up to Christ, Christ is way above us, but he calls us to move more and more in our attitudes, our actions, our words, our priorities, to live in his spirit, to become more and more like him, leaving behind evil and selfishness and greed, arrogance and pride, impurity, revenge, hatred, and move along with Christ who dwells within us into a world of forgiveness, self-giving, living a moral life, seeking to be chaste, seeking to be honest, recognizing God's presence in us. And when that happens, we are being the doer of the word. Now, like I said, none of us do that perfectly. And even in our journey through our life, we might struggle with things that we've had problems with since we were a child. 
but God looks and sees if we are trying and making the effort to become all that we can be. We might not concern ourselves with have we washed kettles and jugs, our hands and all of that, but every person can face that same temptation that the Pharisees had. Because the problem the Pharisees had wasn't rooted in being a Pharisee. It was rooted in being human. In our own lives, we might look and say, well, I have this pious devotion or that act I do, or I wear a medal, or I wear a scapular, or I do this, or I do that. And those things are not bad. But what they're meant to do is be reminders to us that we are people who are seeking to become more and more who we are. I remember a story I heard from a guy a little older than I am, and in the 50s, uh, he and a friend of his were, had a Saturday free, and they were out and about, and their friend said, let's go get lunch. And he said, we have no money. I said, a Saturday, it was a Friday. And so the guy said, I'll get money. And he snuck in a store and stole $10. And then he said, we got money. So they decide they're going to go to Skyline. But in the 50s, on Fridays, you didn't eat meat. And that guy who stole the money, they get in Skyline, and he says, we can't eat here. They only have meat. He stole $10, but was concerned that he not eat meat on Friday. Can you see the problem there? The idea of not eating meat on Friday isn't just one more thing we got to do. It's meant to bring us to conversion, to realize our sorrow for our sins, yet he didn't get it. I think we all can fall into those traps. And so I think a good thing for us to do when we examine our conscience at night or before the sacrament of reconciliation or even in the short time at the beginning of Mass is to ask ourselves, are we truly doers of the word? Are we truly people who live our lives to be interiorating, in, in, interiorizing, sorry, into ourselves the gospel, the full message of Jesus Christ that transforms us and brings us to be more who we are. We might have to look not only at our immediate actions, but what are our values? How does what we believe, given whatever political party we're in, given that we are American or another nationality, given that we live in this area or that area, what are the things that might be unpure in that society says that we want to shed so that we live as people of the word. People who, as James says, follow the protection of the widow and the orphan, who were symbols of, even for our day, of people who are helpless, people who are dependent upon others. May we be true doers of the word who care for the widow and the orphan and keep ourselves untainted by the evil of this world.